What's endearing to be said about a 4,000 pound mammal with huge canine tusks? Hear the scientists who work with them. Walruses love to be next to each other. They're so gregarious. They're always checking in with each other. They kind of snuggle on top of each other. They'll tend to kind of posse up and have these little bluff charges then at the last minute dive under the water. As soon as they're concerned about something, their first response is to, to turn to their companions on the ice pan and sort of sniff them and nudge them. It's almost as if they're saying, did you notice something? The pups are like 150 pounds when they're born. When you see them swimming, the calves will be holding on tight to the mother's backs. It's just neat to see something so big, so caring. Today, the Pacific walrus is facing new challenges. This is walrus territory, the Chukchi Sea, part of the cold, remote Arctic. This vast, shallow sea stretches from the shores of northern Alaska across to Russia. It's the summer range for Pacific walrus females and their young. Over the last 30 years, the Chukchi Sea has experienced a dramatic loss of sea ice due to climate change. Since 2007, this summer ice retreat has accelerated, taking the ice edge into much deeper water. This has created a new situation for the Pacific walrus. In 2007, we observed it. Uh, we dropped our jaws. It really wasn't something we expected to see so soon. This has forced walruses to come to shore to rest. 40,000 at a time or so. Something that really hadn't been seen before in the, in the United States. Why does this matter to the walruses? They eat things that live on the bottom. Their main prey item is clams, but they will take a wide variety of organisms on the seafloor. Very often marine worms and large snails and other things. They uh, dive to the bottom and then kind of root around in the sediment with their, uh, with their muzzle and the the whiskers, the vibrissae on their muzzle are very sensitive and tactile, and they kind of use those almost as fingers to sweep the bottom. Most of the world's ocean is 10,000 feet deep. Beneath the Chukchi Sea is an immense continental shelf that is only 150 feet deep. This vast, shallow sea is extremely rich in the clams and worms so vital to the walrus. Typically, they'll, they'll be down at the bottom of the sea for about seven minutes, uh, foraging, come back up, breathe for two minutes, go back down and do that. Do that dive after dive after dive for hours on end, take a brief rest as maybe they move to another clam bed and continue that. As far as uh, human memory goes, Pacific walrus females and their young have always rested on sea ice. But now the summer sea ice has gone more quickly. This leaves female walrus and their calves with no ice to rest on above their favored feeding grounds. Either they travel longer distances to feed, or they have to forage in deeper waters. Native Alaskans rely very strongly on Pacific walrus. The Yupik word for walrus is Ayavak. It's very important not only for our food, whole parts of the walrus are used to make skin boats, hides. The tusk is made into very beautiful artwork. It's part of our identity culturally. It's hard to imagine um, life for many of these people without having this relationship with walruses. With the increased ship traffic, the um, changing environment, weather and climate changes really um, you know, concerns us because we hope that walrus is there for us to continue hunting. This longer season of open water has created the potential for greater human presence. Now there is more opportunity for transocean shipping, fishing, offshore oil and gas development, and tourism. <coughs> walrus and their calves must now contend with increased human presence just as the security of their summer sea ice disappears. One of the things we're seeing is mortality to calves and young animals because in these large haul-outs, if there's a disturbance, the walruses uh, want to flee into the water and, and very often uh, some of the younger animals get trampled and killed. In 2011, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service concluded that listing of the walrus as a threatened species was warranted. 
Information is being gathered to support a final decision in 2017. How's it look? All clear? Yep, all clear. Thanks very much, guys. You guys have a good sale. Thanks, Joy. We'll see you uh, in a few days, I guess. Society needs to better understand how the walrus is faring. USGS scientists are working to see whether the walrus are finding enough food and where, and to provide information to policymakers to help avoid human disturbances to the walrus. Where are the walrus foraging? Over the past several years, USGS scientists have led expeditions to the remote Arctic to find out. In the Alaskan waters, we have about 95% of the world's walruses. There's perhaps 200 to 300,000. During this trip, we'll be applying 40 radios to walruses. The satellite radio tag has a barbed end and attaches in the blubber layer of the, of the walrus. It's more probably kind of like a sliver that we get in our thumb. And with time, it migrates out of the animal and, and drops off. Essentially, we're looking for walruses hauled out along the ice edge, and when we get into uh, any number of them, then we'll launch the skiffs and start our tag. Quarter mile. You want north to go ahead? You wouldn't by chance have an eye on those wallies that we left behind, do you? Uh, not right now. I'm uh, directing the other boat, but I can take a look for you. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're kind of tooling around the waypoint we, we took and we're not sealing them. The other skiff is uh, just about on them, so do you have a fix on them? Uh, Roger, we got them in the AIS. We'll just follow on in. Yeah, that's my best advice. Um, if I see that you're going the wrong way, I can redirect you. Uh, Scotty, this is Tony here. We've got uh, additional two groups that we're holding the position that will give you bearing when you're ready. Over. Very good, thank you. And we've got to find walruses that have fallen asleep with their face in, into the wind. They're very sensitive to smells. Uh, we're going to make an approach on these walruses. They're a little skittish, so I'm going to go radio quiet a little bit. We have to be within about 10 yards because we have to have a clear view of the walruses' back. We then place the radio on their back. Did you see the animal we tagged? Uh, negative, we didn't. By the end of the 2012 expeditions, USGS will have tracked more than 400 walrus in the Chukchi Sea, with each walrus contributing data about its movement and behavior for the few weeks before the radio tags fall off. What is the result of the disappearing sea ice? On an hourly basis, these instruments can show us whether the walrus is resting out of the water, uh, in the water, or actually foraging at the bottom of the sea. The instrument collects that information, summarizes it every hour, and then when the weather satellites are passing overhead, it transmits a signal. Eventually back at my desk, I'll, I'll unfurl this information and build a diary for the walrus. Uh, after a period of three weeks, maybe at the very most 12 weeks, uh, the walrus's skin rejects the radio as Multiply that by 400 walrus. What we've learned so far, though, is we have been able to map some of the important areas uh, for walruses for foraging, and also how they're migrating through the Chukchi Sea as the sea ice retreats north. We're understanding more how the walruses migrate through the area. One of the goals of this project is to understand how their time allocation has changed when there's no sea ice for them to rest on. When they forage from shore, they have a very different time budget than when they are offshore foraging. They're, they're basically having to commute to get their food. Within the span of human memory, female walrus and calves have not been seen foraging from shore in this way. This behavior is a new response to change in their environment. What are the consequences? Now scientists have the information to analyze how much energy is used on these long commutes, combined with a reduction in resting time. Doing this tracking, we're able to identify sort of the core foraging grounds of Pacific walruses. 
this is of great value to, to people who are concerned about uh, new developments in the Chukchi Sea, uh, both of transoceanic shipping that may be occurring in the near future and of oil leasing. The walruses are also very important to uh, subsistence users, Alaska natives. They're very interested in knowing more about what we're finding out and really what's going on with climate change. Hopefully the work that USGS does helps to sustain walrus in, for us in the future. How are the walrus affected by increased human activity? How far must they go to forage? There's no way to learn but up close in their habitat. And so, in the remote Arctic waters of the Chukchi Sea, scientists continue on tracking the Pacific walrus.